Okay, so before I work on some of the other structures like the, the back legs or the tail or the ears even, I want to seamlessly merge these two together in a way that I like. And that's going to inform a lot of what I do. So I've got the arm, the hand working into the arm. We'll do some finishing stuff beginning of next class where I'll show you how I can clone stamp some of this texture into this area and we can merge them. But right now I'm just trying to get the structures and the transitions as seamless as possible. So I always start by taking away hard edges where things overlap. And then with a texture like fur, which is very soft, you can do a lot with the soft, low opacity brush in terms of merging. And it's nice at a joint, though you don't see this in the animal kingdom, because they're totally different sets of DNA. But it's nice for a joint to change textures. That just makes it a little bit more visually clear that um, a structure is changing at the joint. If I hold down command, it's a shortcut, no matter what tool I'm in. The command tool will bring me the to the move tool, which if you have auto select turned on is really helpful for knowing what to erase. First get rid of that hard edge, and then I can start blending more and more. I want a lot of these spikes to show. And you want them to blend, but you don't want it to soften focus that you otherwise want to keep. And I might want that dark stripe. I don't know yet. I try to keep it pretty intact. I like that neck. This color I'm going to deaden a little bit where I can. All right, let's see. Hold down Command, switch to a different layer, kind of see what's underneath it. Now that other reference isn't doing me a whole lot of good. That's okay, sometimes that's the way it is. Okay, so there we are. Save it. Now we bring on the tails. But even before that, well, maybe that will be part of it. Let's see. Depends what we've got. Because the back legs are another concern. So I like this one. Let's see. This is the one I was thinking. Let's get a lot of overlap. Duplicate it. Turn that off. I think I want to flip it, right? Pull it a little bit bigger. Let's warp it. Fit with that spine. Yeah, as we're working on it, the working file type is always PSD. 
I'm not going to worry about the tip of that tail yet. Just trying to get that spine to kind of line up. That leg's not really in the right position. So maybe, maybe that will be somewhat useful. <laughs> See if this will be a little bit better. It's hard to even see what it is with all of the background around it. Uh, nope. So I have to go back to reference, I think. I have to look for more kind of straight on pictures of crocodiles. So that's why we don't don't do a ton of reference gathering all up front. We mostly work from our sketch. Because even that would be a little bit more useful. And you build from the most important parts, the focal points of the creature, you build from there. Let's see. There's also also came in I could try. This looks promising. I know that bottom foot's missing. Just gives me an opportunity to put in a different kind of foot. Like another bear. So this one I just think is a little too out of focus. Yeah, absolutely. It's a shame, but I don't blame the photographer <laughs> that was happening. So this looks pretty good. This could be useful. It's a little too from the side. I remind myself. Yeah. Worth pursuing. So this PX here, this new site, has a lot of animal reference. It's helpful. All right. So basically the lesson there is don't kill yourself to use reference that's problematic. Instead, find different reference. This is lit better, has more overlap for me to use. Even has a back leg intact. It'll be a pain to cut out. Oops, Command J. Hmm, why is that doing that? Because I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. Command J. Now I'm going to move it up here, and then I'm going to take my different groups, my head group, which I can collapse, my torso group, select them together, and move them. Ah. Select by group. So you can get a lot of trouble if you're not understanding how to organize your layers. And start to see how these might work together. And that gives me a lot of room for a spinal ridge, too. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so what do I do? If I select by layer, 
hold down command, I can get back to this guy and I can play with adjustments. My goal is to have major components all kind of welded together by today, roughly pieced together. Now let's play with color balance. Let's keep the highlights pretty red. Let's keep the shadows pretty cool. Notice I'm not pushing the sliders too extreme, otherwise I lose pixel information. And then I might go back to levels and I might even brighten the midtones a little bit. And deepen the shadows. Okay, then let's throw in the, the weird thing. The pine cones, let's see. Got this one. Not so sure about it. Not quite the right angle. Might work as something on the leg, perhaps. But it also has its shadows are a little bit too dark. Bring in something else. Yeah, I think this will be useful. When something's just huge like that, just zoom out so you can see the transform corners. Angle a little weird. Let's see. Let's be better. Yeah, cool. Now the problem is this has almost no color, so I get to show you something kind of cool. I'm gonna very loosely cut it out, lots of overlap, because I want all those spikes. Duplicate it, turn off the layer behind. And you see how this has almost no color to it. So I go to image adjustment and I go to hue saturation and I can click colorize. What that allows me to do is to pick kind of the, the default color of it. This is good for black and white photos. I want this to be slightly redder and warmer, something kind of like that, but more saturated. a little darker. But the problem is it's all just one color. So I'll show you what I'll do. I'll find that. That's good. Now I'm going to select it. Select the empty space around it. Select the inverse. Go back to the smart layer. Duplicate it again. Turn the smart layer off and then layer the colorized version on top of it at about a 50% opacity. And then I will merge those two together, selecting those two layers, going to Layer, Merge Layers, the shortcut is Command-E. So now I have something that's a little bit more colorful than it was before, right? Because I need some color in order to be able to merge it and work with it. With some color, then I can go to Color Balance, and I can push the highlights towards the warm, and the red, and I can push the shadows just a little bit towards the blue. And maybe the midtones a little bit towards the magenta. And I can give it a little bit more visual depth. I don't love how dark those shadows are, but I can work with it. So I might go to levels and limit. But if they're black, they're black. So that's something that might work with some of the, the stuff I do next class. OK.
So I've got all my component parts 